So you've learned the basics of Smash and are looking to improve to the next level. Let's dive right into it. This is a very simple yet important technique. You can do an instant dash attack from a standing position by tapping the analog stick forward and pressing the C stick down. Every character can pivot tilt or grab. The input is simple. You dash, then tap the analog stick the other direction while pressing attack or grab. Pivot tilt is used for defensive reasons, to zone your opponent out. It basically makes the tilt safer. Pivot grab can be extremely useful in many situations. It also usually increases the range of the grab. If you get grabbed, you can mash out of it. There are two different methods of mashing, by mashing buttons as quickly as you can, or by rotating the analog stick as quickly as you can. You can also mash out of some special moves. The more percent you have, the longer it will take to mash out. You can even mash yourself conscious after a shield break, although the less percent you have, the harder it is to gain consciousness. Buffering means that you input a command for an action slightly before your character is able to do it, basically just after a move is about to end. In this case, the up B is buffered, which means that the animation for the up B will start as soon as the animation for jab ends. The best use of buffering is by jumping at the same time as you throw out an aerial. The easiest way to perform this is by sliding your thumb to the A button immediately after inputting jump. The aerial will then come out as soon as the jump animation starts. This will allow a lot of characters to auto-cancel their moves, making them lag less upon landing. And, some characters can throw out two aerials instead of one, if you buffer the first one. Immediately after you hit the jump button, before your character actually leaves the ground, the jump can be cancelled by certain moves such as up smash, up special, or an item throw. By doing this, your character will slide further than if you just run an up smash. Same thing applies for cancelling it with an item throw. It instead becomes a glide toss, since your character will glide as he throws the item. This will allow you to confirm many more things out of an item throw. This is basically where you run, turn, and quickly jump so that you jump backwards in the direction of your initial run while still keeping some of the momentum. This is extremely useful since it allows you to throw out a back air instead of a forward air. This can also be combined with a jump cancel to do a reverse up smash while sliding. Sweet Spot is the part of an attack that has the greatest effect. It's usually the one that deals the most damage and knockback. Sour Spot would be the opposite. It's the weak hit of an attack, which happens because you didn't space the move right, or because you hit with the late part of the move. This isn't necessarily bad. Sometimes it's even better to hit with the Sour Spot because it can lead to things that a sweet spot wouldn't lead to. You can drop the item that you are holding and catch an item by pressing Z, basically the grab button. You can also grab the item with any aerial, air dodge, dash attack, or jab although the timing for jab is really strict. If you catch it with air dodge, you can throw the item by immediately tapping the C-stick in any direction. You can drop an item and immediately throw out an aerial to catch it again. This is useful if you want to perform an aerial, even though you're holding an item. And if you tech right on an item, you will end up grabbing it as well. 
This is a normal neutral beat. If you want to do a turnaround neutral beat, you need to quickly tap and release the analog stick to the left, then press B. This other technique is called B reverse. It's more of a momentum switch. It's done by pressing B, then immediately tapping the analog stick to the left. This is also possible with some of the down and side specials. Side special, for example, would be done by pressing side B to the right, then quickly tapping the analog stick to the left. Or by pressing side B to the left, then tapping to the right. There's another technique called wave bouncing. It allows you to switch your momentum while still facing the same direction. It's done by first doing a turnaround B, then B reversing it. This technique is extremely hard to pull off. The easier way of pulling it off would be by doing a turnaround jump, then B reverse. This is where you initiate a dash, then after the initial frames of the dash, you continue to hold forwards and press shield. It's probably one of the best movement options in the game. It's especially incredible for following an opponent that is landing. The most typical punish here would be shield grabbing, which is done by pressing A or grab while shielding. Also, since you can jump out of your shield without having the need of releasing the shield first, you can cancel that jump for an up special or up smash out of shield. Beware though, because if the opponent hits your shield, you will get pushed back and suffer from shield hit stun. Shield hit stun means that after you've blocked an attack, you are in a state of freeze or stun for a short period of time, depending on how strong the attack is that you're blocking. During shield hit stun, you cannot release your shield or do any other option such as grab or jump until the shield hit stun is over. You can minimize your shield hit stun and pushback almost entirely by perfect shielding. Shield poking is basically hitting someone with a normal attack even if they are holding up their shield. To do this, you have to make sure that your attack hits a part of the character that isn't covered by their shield. And at the same time, make sure your attacks avoid hitting what's left of the shield. This is why you can tilt the shield to prevent the shield poke. Invincibility and intangibility frames are the period of time during which a character cannot be attacked or damaged. They're basically the same thing. The only tiny difference is that during intangibility, the character is completely unhittable and any attack will pass through them. And during invincibility, the hit will register, although there will be no damage or knockback. Find out if your character has any frames like this and put them to good use. Trample, also known as block hitbox, is something that a few characters have on their moves. It's basically invincibility at a certain area during a move. It blocks the enemy's attack, neglecting any damage or knockback. A character will not receive any knockback during super armor. Although he will still take full damage, heavy armor can only block a certain amount of aggression. So if an attack is too strong, the opponent will get the full knockback. Too strong can be either too much damage or too much knockback. This all works differently depending on character and move. If you want to find out about all the moves that have super armor or heavy armor, you should check out the video in the description below. Alright, so step 1. Start using the C-Stick for aerials. This will sound like an obvious and simple step, but it's not. A lot of players never use the C-Stick, or don't use it enough. Start getting used to it, it'll help more than you think, and will for example improve your spacing. Step 2 would be to start shield dashing a lot, as well as start incorporating instant dash attacks, pivot tilts, and grabs. Step 3. Remember that you can jump out of your shield, which you can cancel into an up smash or up special directly out of shield. This is very useful if you need to punish something quickly, or get the opponent off of you. Step 4 is to practice buffered aerials. Practice them as you run around, and as you shield dash. If you're having trouble buffering an up air, and find yourself doing up smash instead, it's because you're doing it too fast. I would instead recommend changing the L or R button to attack, 
so that you can use X or Y to jump, then buffer an attack with L or R. Another option would be changing the C stick to attack, and changing either L or R to jump. This will allow you to buffer up air with ease. By pressing L or R to jump and buffering an attack with C stick, this option will also make it easier for you to do a jump cancelled up special out of shield. Step 5. Start incorporating reverse aerial rush. And if your character can throw items, start glide tossing every time. The final step would be learning how to be reverse. Seriously, it's really good. When you feel like you've pretty much mastered all of these, or if you already know all of these, then proceed to the next part, right here. Is that all?